Hello, I'm Jeff Donahue with the Suprema North America Tech Support Branch Office. Today I'll be covering the hardware portion of the core station and how to wire devices up to it. First, I'll cover the optional enclosure for the core station. The ENCR-10, which includes the 8-channel 12-volt DC power supply and a door tamper switch. As well, there's a place to mount and secure the 12-volt battery that is not included with the enclosure. The left picture shows the enclosure with the door closed, which includes an AC and battery LED light status. The picture on the right shows where the core station we place inside along with the power supply and the lower left and the backup battery mounting location on the bottom right. Here we have uh, four different readers designed to go with the core station and slave devices, yet many other Suprema readers can be used as well. The first is our BioEntry R2 or BER2, which is a biometric fingerprint reader as well as a RFID card reader. Next is our XPass D2 readers, which are um, weatherproof and outdoor rated. So they have an IP rating of IP67 and IK08 for vandalism rating. And the first model is the XPass D2 bullion style. Um, the next one is the XPass D2 Gang Box, and another one, XPass D2 Gang Box with a keypad. Um, all four of these readers are multi class readers, can read um, different technologies of RFID cards. Next, here I'll cover our peripherals that are designed to go with the core station. First, we have our DM20 module, which um, is used to as a door expansion module. Um, it can do two Wigan readers directly into it. Um, it has four relays on it, and then it has four, eight inputs and six outputs on the unit as well. So it can be used when using Suprema readers. It can be used to control four doors, or if you're using Wigan readers, it'll be just two doors only. Next in the middle is our OM120 output module, which has 12 relays. It's also considered our elevator control module. And last on the far right is our Secure IO2 version 2, and it is used to control a single door. Next, I'll cover how our core station would be wired via 485 using our Suprema readers. And in this application, we have four bioentry R2s. And all you need going to the readers is four conductors, two for power and two for the RS-485 data. Um, you can also, if you wanted to, daisy chain the readers, such as read in, read out um, reader. So in this case, you would have the 485 going to the first reader and then daisy chain to the next reader. Now, when you do daisy chain our readers, you want to be sure to use the termination. So we, the readers come with a resistor as well on the core station. There's a little dip switch you can slide to turn the termination on. So you always want to make sure you use twisted pair wire as well when doing the 485 connections. Now, when you are doing the um, daisy chaining the 485 connection, you need to be sure it's wired correctly and not T-tapped as the bottom picture shows. That would not work properly. You need to be sure you're daisy chaining properly in and out of each reader. Um, next, uh, we'll have a short video of actually wiring, wiring up the core station with a couple of our Suprema readers. All right. So let's go over the core kit or core station itself first. So it has four door ports on it already. So you know, door port zero, one, two, and three. So counterclockwise on the board here. Now on each door port, I'll just go over one the one door port real quick for you. So over on door port three, we have the relay here, um, two inputs for your Rex and door position switch, uh, TTL out, um, which is two of them, that and Wigan. So that is if you're using a third party reader with our door port, with our core station, you can connect them to the door port and the outs would be to trigger the LEDs or the buzzers on the reader itself. And then we have 12 volt DC power out to the readers 
and then 45 connection at the top here. Now when using our Suprema readers, you want to use a 45 connection and not the Wiegand connection. So I'll go over that here in a minute. But um, as you can see also on each door port, we have large light um, for when the relay is triggered. You actually see that come on after a while when I get to that point as well as lights for the supervisions when they're actually being triggered and violated. Now also on the board here at the bottom, we have the 12 volts DC coming into the unit, as well as a couple auxiliary inputs, which you could wire a cabinet tamper to that. Um, so each, like I said, each door port is here and you have 40, four 45 connections on the board. And at the very top, let me show you the top of the board here. We have another 45 connection, which is called a host connection, and then the ethernet connection when connected to the LAN. All right, so zoom in here on door port three. As I've already went ahead and wired in a REX button and a door contact as well. So we'll test those out here in a little bit. Um, now when you, Wiring up the R2, let me just go over that real quick with you. The R2, this that's the front of it, the R2, bio-entry R2, is a fingerprint reader. You present your finger here and card reader up here. Um, this is the power connection, 12 volt. And then, like I said, we'll use the 45 connection. That's for this one. And then the gray and black are 45 ground and shield um, in this application. All right, so I'll go ahead and wire this in. And then I want to take the shield at 45 ground and go to the ground and put as well, or the 12 volt ground. So all the grounds on the board are same polarity and have continuity between them. And now put the 12 volt positive in. And now with the Rex, I wired into port six and the door contact are wired into port seven. Um, now something to take note with any of our readers, no matter which model you're working with, there's a serial number here on the back of the unit. It's good to document that serial number before you mount them and document where you mount them because when you're inside Biostar 2, which is software used to add them in, um, you see them by serial number. So if you have multiple readers of the same model type, you can't necessarily tell where they're apart. So if you document it beforehand, just a best practice um, to do so. Um, now go ahead and we'll wire in, I have an X-Pass D2 Moyen style, I want to wire that into door port zero. And now this is the X-Pass D2 Moyen. And now on the back of the unit, it has, it's sealed as far as the wires going in. So this can be outdoor, um, it's outdoor rated, it can be mounted outdoors and so forth. While the R2 I just showed you, it has pigtails that can come out the back. It's for indoor use only. So with this pigtail here, a lot of people ask, oh, do we have an adapter for that to connect to it? No, we do not. So we just tell people cut it off completely or just cut off the wires you're going to use. This application, I'm going to be just using the 45 and power. So take the red and black for the 12 volt, snip them. And then same thing with the 45 connector. And once again, I have my Rex button, which are wired into input zero and a door contact into input one. All right. So I'll go ahead at the top and go ahead and plug my ethernet connection in. And then at the bottom, I already pre-wired the uh, 12 volts coming in. So let's get that plugged in. Now we'll see the unit come on. Oh, 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.